Hi, I'm Jack Kandig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment and the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to replace the pump element in a G-series pump. The function of the G-series pumps is to supply lubricant under pressure. That means we want to see flow and pressure. If you're getting a lube fault on your pump or on your controller and your pressure gauge is showing that you're not building pressure, then it might be time to replace the pump element. The G-series pumps have a motor inside with a cam that turns around and it just causes this piston pump to stroke back and forth. It's easy to see the pump here because this pump doesn't have any accessories attached, but the pump could be installed here or here on the front or here on the side. There are three positions. That's where the three in G3 comes from is that you can have up to three pump elements. This one is simple because it just has one element. On, on this system, it's hidden behind a vent valve. So before we change the pump element, we would need to remove the vent valve. And every pump is gonna have some kind of arrangement of a, of a relief valve and some fittings, which are gonna need to be removed first. Another thing to look at is if you have an oil pump or a grease pump, because with a grease pump, the grease is thick enough that it's not gonna pour around, it's not gonna come running out when you remove this pump element. But with an oil pump, it's gonna have a one inch hole and if you remove that without draining the reservoir, all the oil is going to come gushing out and you're going to make a big mess. So it's important to use one of these drain ports to drain the oil from an oil reservoir before you change the pump element. I have seen some installations where a slick arrangement of fittings with an elbow and a ball valve create kind of a drain valve. There may be other ways to do it too. So maybe you're lucky and whoever put your system together put some kind of a drain on your pump. but. Either way, before you pull that pump element out, make sure that you drain the reservoir of all the oil. And again, with grease, you probably don't need to do that, so it'll be a little bit simpler on a grease reservoir because you can just remove whatever's interfering with your access to the pump and you can just spin out that pump element and replace it. So let's take a look at how this is done. Now, before we proceed to do anything else, we want to make sure that there isn't any residual pressure in the system, so we're going to safely relieve that pressure by loosening some fittings. The manual says to loosen the fitting at the pump outlet, where most of the time you'll have a system that just has one or two fittings here and it's a lot simpler than what we see here. But a real complicated system like this, you can just come out here to this fitting and loosen that and just give that a few turns and any pressure trapped inside will relieve through that. Then you can go ahead and start removing the other fittings to get at the pump element. With a vent valve, there's really only one piece fastening it to the, the pump and that's this big banjo bolt that will just come off. And it's a straight thread, so once you loosen it, you can probably just spin it out with your fingers like this. Now the vent valve just hangs off of this o-ring sealed piece, but it's not even threaded. It just it's actually held on by the banjo bolt too. So now we can see the pump element and it's a size that I usually don't carry a wrench for. So it's it's fine to use a crescent wrench on this because it's not really going to be seized in there. This is another piece where it's a straight thread with an o-ring seal and you can mostly get it out with your fingers. Maybe if your grip is stronger than mine, you don't need to cheat and get the wrench again. Okay, I've got the pump element loose, so now all I have to do is pull it out and yeah, with the grease, it just sticks to it. The grease is staying put, it's not running out. And now we could put a new pump element in. I'm gonna leave this one clean because it's our trainer's demonstration unit and just put this guy back in. When you pull out the old pump element, you need to check to make sure it comes out looking like this, where you have the retainer, the spring itself, and this little piston inside. This piston can actually pull right out with those other pieces missing. So any of these pieces, if they're left inside the reservoir, they're gonna cause problems later on. So you wanna inspect the old pump and just make sure everything came out with it. If it didn't, you're gonna have to fish around inside and try to pull these out. It's gonna be difficult to get them out, but you need to make sure that they're not in there floating around in the grease because they're just gonna cause problems with the new pump. So take a look at the old pump, 
make sure it has all these pieces installed still and if it doesn't then you need to fish around and get them out before you install the new pump. Now the thing we talk about a lot at Graco is torque spec and this has a torque spec too. The base is a nylon material that's reinforced with fiberglass in the nylon but ultimately you still have a piece of steel that's threading into a piece of nylon so it would be really easy for this steel piece to strip out the nylon and if you do that your whole pump is pretty much ruined because unless you move it over to another port you can't you can't use that base anymore once that's once that thread is stripped out and the torque spec for this is only 50 inch pounds so that's just a little over four foot pounds that's not very much and you don't necessarily need to use a torque wrench but I'm throwing that torque spec out there to tell you that you don't want to tighten this on like it's going into a piece of metal because again steel on nylon the nylons are going to lose the steel parts the replaceable part so now you strip that nylon out and you need a whole new G3 or G1 or whatever G series pump you have okay there that o-ring seal seals it up all I did was snug it up and now we could put our vent valve back on or whatever you have for your arrangement of accessories. If it's a vent valve, it just slides back over that fitting and then this just threads back in and we'll tighten that up and then after that we can add back whatever other fittings. Typically there would just be a hose, maybe an elbow with that on, on a system like this. But some systems have a lot more accessories and a lot more elaborate arrangement of, of fittings. So, at this point it's just a matter of putting it back together so that's all that's to it the piston pump is a fairly modular piece so if this ever wears out and you're not getting your pressure and flow anymore then it's a simple process to just replace that piston pump you can see on this pump that there's one spacer installed and on this one there are two spacers these just our li output limiting spacers that you have them on there to pull the pump away from the cam a little bit so you get a shorter stroke. Most applications don't use these and it's really rare to use two but if you do have a situation where you have one or two of these spacers on the old pump make sure you put them on the new pump as well. You can thread the pump into the body of the G3 most of the way and then just add the spacers at the end and also if you do use two spacers I've observed in the field that these pumps don't like to prime with grease when there are two spacers so it's good to put the pump in all the way if you're installing it into a grease system where there are two spacers don't put the spacers in right away and thread it in all the way run the pump a little bit to prime the pump and then once the pump is primed back it out again put the two spacers in and then snug it up and reconnect your fittings